Is honey beekeeping doing more harm than good? One third of pollinator species, such as bees, butterflies, bats, and hummingbirds, are in decline in many parts of the world. In Europe, one out of 10 bee and butterfly species is threatened with extinction. Without pollination, there is no plant reproduction. Many plant species would decline and eventually disappear. Almonds, apples, coffee and strawberries are some of the foods that depend on the essential pollination work carried out by bees. What is really happening is that we are losing the rare and dangerous species and we are reducing the populations of many bees. And for this we don't need to speculate, we already know that in agricultural areas very intensive with large monocultures, they lose most of their wild bee populations and the crop yields have uh, declined consequently. So for humans, the first uh, clear impact is that uh, the crop production will decrease. There are 20,000 different species of bees, species of flies, butterflies, moths, wasps, beetles, drips, birds, bats, and other vertebrates. However, humans can only domesticate or manage honeybees, which isn't always the most effective species, either in how much they can pollinate or the range of plants they serve. As wild bee and butterfly populations shrink, the number of honeybee hives in the European Union has been steadily growing. The EU is the world's second largest honey producer after China. The drivers of pollinator decline are well known. Land use changes, intensive farming, pesticide use, pollution, invasive species, infectious diseases, and climate change. But now, some scientists say honey beekeeping could be making things worse. So in the agricultural areas we were working on in Spain, uh, which were orange groves, and beekeepers put hives close to these groves to get honey. Um, but then uh, what happens with uh, oranges is that they flower all at the same time and they flower for a short period of time, something like a week or something like that. And then when all of those orange flowers disappear, um, those bees, they were moving into um, the surrounding areas in search for extra food. So could large honeybee hives be depriving wild bees of the food they need to survive? They have very large colonies of tens of thousands of individuals and are extremely good at finding flower resources and foraging for those resources. So when there is an uh, abundance of honeybees in the neighborhood, you have some serious competition. Those wild bees are really under serious competition. For that reason, for many ecologists, honeybee keeping is not protecting biodiversity. In some cases, it may even be harmful, especially where there are fewer flowers like urban spaces. I've even seen some uh, campaigns trying to increase the amount of honeybee hives, like commercial honeybee hives, in, to rescue pollinators. And for me, that would be equivalent to say, like, we need more chicken farms to save the bird biodiversity. So, what's the solution to saving wild bees? If I can plant a wildflower patch in my garden, if you can do the same, bit by bit, it just exponentiates and extrapolates. And it's just one step that you can do. The solutions may sound simple, but putting them into practice is not always straightforward. Many of these steps are already encouraged by the EU Pollinators Initiative, but adoption remains a challenge. Researchers agree. The most important step is raising awareness and educating the public. Planting native flowers, the ones that local bees have evolved with, can make a big difference. Think borage, comfrey, lavender and dandelions. And rather than keeping lawns perfectly trimmed, let them grow a little wild. Avoid pesticide use whenever possible. Because bees don't just help us grow food, they serve as bioindicators of ecosystem health. So, if wild bees are driving in your garden, you're helping biodiversity drive too.